right here, an inbounds play. When you fall asleep and can get it that quickly inside, then it's not going to be happy about the D on that play. First foul on Caleb Forrest, third team foul already on Washington State. Zachary gets the free throw. Yeah, you were talking to me before how you like this guy. Seven feet tall, 255 pounds. He's a man. He really is. <laughs> Played well against UConn. Didn't miss a shot in 26 minutes. That was the big time help they needed against a very big UConn team. Off the mark. And Zachary has probably benefited from the absence of Josh Heitfeld, one of the guys that's out. And just think how good this team's going to be when he comes back. Oh, big time. Josh Heitfeld's one of the best big guys on the West Coast. Zachary getting minutes that he wouldn't normally get. Derek Lowe penetrates. Little floater bounces out. And there is Austin Day, the true freshman with the rebound. And he is not shy. Look for Day to get it up. Inside, Zachary rolls off. And the rebound for Calgill. Caleb Forrest getting tangled up with Zachary in there. Very, very physical game. Both teams play physical defense. Calgill penetrated. The left hand off. Offensive foul. Calgill can handle play, but when he goes from that far away from the basket, it gives the defense a lot of time to get the charge. Maybe from the high post going in, he's got it, but he went all the way from the three-point line. Tony Bennett, I was talking to him about his pro career with the Charlotte Hornets. He was down there with Alonzo Mourning and Larry Johnson. He told me the story, he said he was out there one game and Michael Jordan was guarding him. And he said to Michael, why did they get you on me? You need a rest? <laughs> Big time player and a great, great coach. How about being the coach of the year in your first year as a head coach, huh? What an accomplishment. And in March, he was rewarded with a three-year contract extension that will have him and Pullman in the 2014. 9-6 Cougars, 13-45 to play in the first half. Inside, Zachary looked for the turnaround, now kicks it back out. And Zaga's emphasis definitely on the inside right now. Bolden not getting the kind of shots that he needs to get for them to be on all cylinders. This is the first personal on Gonzaga. It's Robert Zachary. Number six, Washington State. Number 19, Gonzaga here at the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane. $45 million facility. And this place is jammed alongside Bob Wenzel and Andy Katz. I play Mappic outstanding top 25 showdown here tonight they've only lost one game since this building's been in use here's Derek Lowe a little strong Fargo pretty good rebounder too excellent rebounder for a point guard Larry Gurganius kicking it back out Day lopes into the lane long shot and again a rebound for Cargill you can see Washington State right here with Weaver handling the point guard duties at this moment. Richesti is out of the game, so Weaver showing you his versatility. Cowgill. Get by Day. He is long. Day 6'10", long wingspan, probably about 7'3". His dad played at UCLA, Darren Day. He likes to get the shots up, too. His dad, Darren, went on to five years in the NBA. Here's Pargo now, the floater. And they're going to call him for the offensive foul. Both teams so far showing willingness to sacrifice their bodies. Pargo on the drive right here. Caleb right where he should be. Mr. Forrest takes that one. Bob, are we seeing some jitters here the last 320? No field goals for either team. Well, I don't think it's jitters. I think it's 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 just that both teams are playing really solid defense. That certainly, as you mentioned, is the calling card of Washington State. Absolutely. They are fourth in the nation in points given up, only 52 a game. Look at that pass. Inside oh, Caleb baby. Forrest. <laughs> Caleb is a sub. I mean, he's getting some run right here. He's having to go basket to basket, giving away a lot of poundage to Zachary inside. Biggest lead for Washington State of five points. 
And that foul is on Forrest. That's his second personal. Well, frequent substitutions by both teams here. Both ends for Caleb Forrest. Scores here, and he's the last guy down the floor because he was caught under the basket and made a good foul, actually. Not any points, not any free throws. Just an inbounds play for Gonzaga. Harmling in now for Washington State, number 32, an excellent shooter. Cusso tried to kick it out as he got into trouble, and it rolls out of bounds. Washington State will get it back. We're going to step aside. 11.57 to go here in the first half. 11-6, Washington State out in front. Eleven six Washington State play Mathic Bob Wenzel courtside here in Spokane. Andy Katz is with us as well. And Andy, we're seeing arguably one of the best backcourts in the Pac-10 here tonight. You know what's amazing, guys, is I can't tell you how many times in the preseason I had coaches tell me, are they that talented? Will they be able to do it again? Well, I was in Philadelphia over the summer and Team USA was put together. There were only 12 players selected, some of the top veterans coming back to college basketball. Chris Lofton didn't make it. Two Washington State players made it, Derek Lowe and Kyle Weaver. And I talked to those players after that, players like DJ White, Roy Hibbert. They said th this team was incredibly talented. Drew Knightsville, they couldn't get over the talent that Kyle Weaver and Derek Lowe had. And I'll tell you this, there were 100 names suggested from the Wooden Ward Committee to put down for 50. Derek Lowe was not listed as one of the 100. We all had to write him in to be one of the top 50. He certainly deserved it. Absolutely. Who does the pace favor right now, Bob? Pace favors Washington State. They want the game in the 50s. So far, they're handling it well. Baines will turn around. He had that put back in his face. Austin Day is second block of the night. Bolden taking it back the other way. Knocked out. Here's Micah Downs. Got it. with the hops on the offensive boards. Downs now at five, and we've got some blood on the other end of the floor. Bleeding from his eye is Aaron Baines. Well, he is one fiery competitor. Made a jump hook in the lane against Baylor to help seal that victory the other day. Was very angry on calls and demonstrative on the bench when he was taken out, just like he is right now. Right here, put the ball on the floor, gets whacked. The elbow comes down on his eye, and that was day, accidental, incidental. Well, they're gonna get him patched up. I'm sure it won't be long before we see him again. He likes it better when he's bleeding. The ball was kicked. Cougars out to their best start since the 91-92 team won 12 in a row to start the year. They come into this one undefeated 7-0. Coming up on the 11-minute mark, Rochesti tried to kick it out for Forrest, and that failed to click. Unusual right here. Turnovers for them. Not in their bag of tricks normally.